Welcome to our eighth video on our series on international macroeconomics. In this video, we're going to continue studying the small open economy model, but we're going to modify it to include production in the economy. As you're going to see, this is going to relate a lot with the model in chapter 11, the two-period model with production. Let's get into it. So as I was just saying, the background for this is going to be the two-period production economy of chapter 11. This is going to be a model where consumers supply labor to firms in addition to making their consumption and saving choices. And firms are going to demand labor and are going to invest in capital for the second period. So production is going to take capital and labor. Now the key difference between the model we have here and the model in chapter 11 is that the interest rate is fixed by international markets. So the interest rate R is going to be given by the international interest rate R star. Now, what are the effects of this fixed interest rate in the economy? Well, the first thing to notice is that they are very different from the ones that we had in the New Keynesian model. This is a very different type of model. In the New Keynesian model, output was demand-driven. So the output supply curve was sidestepped, and all output was determined by demand. But now, output is going to depend exclusively on the output supply. So we're going to have to be looking a lot at the interplay between the real interest rate, which is going to be given by the international markets, and the output supply. What's going to happen is that trade is going to absorb any surplus or deficit of goods and services in the country. So if the demand of output is lower than the supply of output at the international interest rate, there are going to be exports. Basically, there's going to be a surplus of goods and those goods are going to be exported. If, on the other hand, there is more demand at the given interest rate than there is output, then you're going to meet that with imports. Now, I recommend you to, in addition to reading chapter 16, reading the sections on consumers, firms, and equilibrium in chapter 11. The reason is going to become apparent in the next two slides, but it's basically that we're not going to go over the construction of the aggregate demand and aggregate supply curves in this model because they look exactly the same as the ones in chapter 11. So that's going to be in those first three sections of that chapter. So I recommend you take a look. Okay, so before we get into our open economy model, it's going to be useful to contrast how it works when the economy is closed. So this figure is uh, taken from chapter 11. It's showing you how the equilibrium is going to work in the closed economy. The first is the demand curve, basically this downward sloping curve, that comes from consumer saving choices and the firm's investment choice. This is why sometimes this curve is called the IS curve, the investment savings curve. Now we saw that what we were doing to get it is we were looking at the whole expenditure in the economy. Remember, this economy is closed, and so expenditure at some given interest rate R is given by how much consumption there is. That depends on the interest rate and on total income Y. It depends on the investment at that given interest rate and on government spending. But then we know that expenditure must equal income, and so the way we found this curve is we had to impose the fact that income equals expenditure so that we're looking for Y of R so that it is equal to the consumption, investment, and government spending at a given interest rate. And that's the way we constructed this curve. The supply curve comes from the firm's problem. That's going to give you your demand, for, uh, your demand for labor and the equilibrium in the labor market. Okay, So that's going to be constructing this supply curve. Then the interest rate in the market is there to equate the value demanded and supplied in this economy. This is going to be the key difference when we move in the next slide to open economies. The interest rate is not going to be the one that necessarily clears the domestic market. Let's see that. So in an open economy equilibrium, we see here the interest rate can be, for example, higher than the closed economy interest rate. So this RC, the C stands for closed economy. We see here Y2 will be the demand that you will have in the closed economy. RC and Y2 are the output and interest rate that you will have in the closed economy. Basically the same ones we had in the previous slide. But interest rate is higher and so is output. 
This is because there is higher output supply at that point. Let's get into it a bit more. Two things are gonna happen because interest rate is higher. The first one is demand is lower in the closed economy because of that. You can see that in the difference between how much is demanded in the closed economy at this higher interest rate and how much is supplied. Sorry about it. The second difference is that supply is higher in the closed economy. This is because the interest rate is higher here. Okay, so you're moving upwards in this curve. Now, why are there two different demand curves? Why do we need a Y2 and a Y1? Well, Y2 is what's going to happen in the closed economy. Y1 is what's going to happen in the open economy. The difference, you will see, is straight. In the open economy, you have to add net exports to total demand. And so what's happening here is that output is given entirely by the supply curve, kind of like in the Nukinesian model, output was given entirely by the demand curve. Here is the opposite. And then the domestic market is going to absorb part of output. In this case, the domestic market only absorbs output up until here. The rest is going to be met by trade. And so the second demand curve is shifted up or down as required to restore equilibrium in the goods market. So international trade is going to guarantee that the goods market clears by adding exports or subtracting imports as needed. Okay, this term here, absorption, turns out to be very important. It tells you how much of total output is absorbed by your own economy. And absorption can be positive or it can be negative relative to output. So if absorption is higher than output, that means you need to import. And if absorption is lower than output, as is the case in this graph, then you're going to need to export. You're producing more than what you're absorbing in your domestic market. And that is it. That is all we need to do to make our chapter 11 model into an open economy. What we're going to do in our last video is we're going to take this model and we're going to look at different changes in the economy and how they affect the open economy model.